Hadouken! My name is Thiago Maia. Uh, I'm, uh, uh, it's always difficult to try to explain why I do. I do quite a lot of things, but I would call myself a designer and animator. Uh, I run a cook studio. Uh, cook studio is my, my company, my studio, my boutique, whatever you guys want to call. But it's basically is uh, is animation and design studio. Uh, we do all kind of work. Uh, from broadcast to TV commercial, online commercial, uh, kind of uh, online videos. Uh, so here you can have a little bit more taste of what kind of work we do. This is a, a little, one of the latest work we did as well. It's for Pringles. Uh, So as you can see, it's using quite a mix of uh, live action motion graphics, cell animation, uh, compositing, VFX, a mix of everything. I would say motion graphic is pretty much a mix of a little bit of everything put together in one place. Uh, so yeah, so I've been running, I've been working as a motion graphic design or as a creative person for the last almost 20 years. And now I start thinking 1999. That gives a little bit my age for you guys. But I've been, I've, I'm original from Brazil, as you can hear on my accent. Uh, so I moved to London, I think after three years, I uh, work in Brazil. Uh, I've worked full time here for, for about two years and a half, three years in a small studio in London. Uh, after that, I just jumped for freelance life, uh, worked for about seven, eight years as a freelance. Uh, and after I opened this studio, we used to call Cake in, in the beginning, I opened with a great friend of mine. Uh, after we, we just uh, split the studio and uh, I carry on and we moved the name up change name after and uh, we call cookies so it's been running for about it's going to be eight years in a few months so we do all kind of work as you guys can see you guys can join have a look on the website after so i don't need to spend a lot of time showing you guys uh if you want to know more here's the website this is kind of social links uh personal and the studio uh, vimeo and facebook nowadays uh my work is all through the studio. I do quite a few personal job, uh, animation, but it normally goes on the website of the studio as well. Uh, so I started my career as to almost 20 years ago. I've been running an event. So if you guys, I don't know where is everyone based, but if you're based in London or in UK, I uh, also uh, the co-founder of Sino Evo. You can see the website here. Sino Evo is, is the biggest uh, motion design animation event in London. We do it every two months. Uh, next one is next Tuesday, by the way. Uh, so it's a more a community where people can find work, can see a great speaker talking and uh, also look for jobs on the Facebook group. Uh, a part of that, I've been head of motion graphic on uh, Escape. Uh, for I started the course a few years ago and left and came back again. So we have some Courses come up, we have a, a taster coming this Thursday. So if you wanna know more, you can come and it's just a three hours uh, class on from seven to 10 p.m. on Thursday. You guys can see how I teach a little bit more, know more about the course, have just a little taste of the course pretty much. And then we have a, a full-time course come on 22nd of August and another one come uh, a night course part-time. The full-time cover Cinema Foodie and uh, After Effects as a tools. Uh, and uh, the night course uh, is covering most After Effects, but it's again, is all about creative, all about problems in the industry and solving problems than just tools. So let's just jump a little bit on the, on the webinar. So we're gonna be talking today about simple thing, more how to 
how to polish your animation in After Effects. I'm, I'm hoping you guys know After Effects, at least the basic, basic, uh, because I'm not gonna be covering how to add keyframe, things like that, just how to change keyframes, how to work with the graph editor, and, and uh, just uh, about principle of animations and tips to make your animation look a little bit better. Uh, in the end, I'm gonna do a, about 10 minutes Q&A with you guys. So if you guys have a few questions more, about the industry or things like that. I'm happy to help and I give a little bit more, more knowledge to you guys, okay? So we're gonna jump on this After Effects course uh, or tutorial or webinar, whatever we wanna call this today. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna pretty much show you guys how to play with a uh, graph editor, how to change keyframes, what type of keyframes we have and things like that. So this is the project I share with you guys. If you look, it's basically it's full uh, uh, cubes moving from left to right and taking the same time between all then. Uh, we're gonna play and change uh, the type of keyframe, the curves on the keyframe on each one. And also on the last one, we're gonna, uh, add few of the my favorite principle of animation uh, of the twelve principle of animation. So I want we we get there. You go. So this is a uh, oops. So this is a. Uh, so this is what we're gonna be animating. You can see each one animating a complete different way. Uh, all then take pretty much the same time a part of the last one where of course we add more uh, uh, intro and outro on there but all then takes the same time the only thing changed is the curve and the principle we're gonna use so before we jump on the after effects I want you guys where I just lost uh, tu -tu 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 -tu. yes there you go. So as you guys, cool. So we're gonna be talking about a bit of keyframes in After Effects. So I'm gonna talk about the main main is uh, the three types of keyframes we're gonna work today. So we have the linear keyframes where all your animation is pretty much linear. So the speed never variates from the beginning to the end. So if you imagine Anything we do in a real life, normally there is acceleration and deacceleration. Uh, not exact on this wood, but it's the only, anything you're gonna do, I'm gonna use a car as an example. So if a car is on the red traffic light and gonna start animate, you're gonna suddenly have acceleration happen. The car speed up and probably gonna stay con constantly in the same speeds and before it hits the another traffic light or some hazard in the way, you're gonna break and you're gonna disaccelerate. So for that, we're gonna always use easy, easy. Uh, so it's basically easing out the animation and using in the animation. So it's adding acceleration and deacceleration on the animation. Uh, we use linear animation like if you have a scene where the car, you know, you, you see the guy leaving the red traffic lights, you know, start driving. So you have the acceleration happen there. Suddenly you cut to another scene and when the guy's already in the middle of the, the, the trip driving uh, constantly in the same speed. So that your animation from that would be always a linear animation. You wouldn't see the guy coming. Uh, can we? We, we would never see the car accelerating and disaccelerating. The same if you create a walk cycle uh, in the scene, the car, const uh, the guy constantly walking, uh, will be kind of uh, a linear movement from left and right or right to left, okay? Uh, the third third keyframe type we're gonna we're gonna talk about a little bit is a hold keyframe. So a basic a hold keyframe is when the if we use the cube as a reference is when the cube is stay holding his position until he finds another keyframe with the other 
information for him. So, uh, for example, if a cube is here, we're looking, let me just open this. So, if you see all these cube here, they all move from the keyframe in the left tell this is the position, and the keyframe in the right tell them to be exactly at 30 frames at this position. So if that was a hold keyframe, this cube would hold his position in here all this time until he finds another keyframe, then tell him to jump here. So suddenly he would disappear from this position and appear to this position. Uh, you can call yourself a magician if you do that. Uh, so it's, it's basically is a jump between one point to the other. Uh, so this is the main, main three keyframes, okay? So mainly a hold keyframe and a linear keyframe is when you use for a specific thing. So uh, someone, uh, let's say uh, we have a, a lamppost and a guy is hiding behind the lamppost and suddenly he appear on the bottom, you know, from behind the bottom of the lamppost, hide again, appear next time from the top, hide again, appear from the middle. So every time you need to move his position up and down and he's behind the lamppost, you're just gonna use a hold keyframe because you're not seeing him animate from the top to the bottom, the bottom to the top. It's basically he appears and pops from behind that position behind the lamppost. Uh, so mainly, mainly the main thing you want is concentrate on the easy, easy. Okay, and uh, that of course is pretty simple if we let the computer do that job for us. So these three examples show you a hold keyframe. So they moving from top to bottom, a hold keyframe stays out of the screen until he finds another keyframe then show and he appears there. The linear, the time is constantly the same the speed is constantly the same. So nothing changed. So it turns to be a linear movement. Every frame you have the same distance of the position. Where a easy, easy, you have acceleration and that you disaccelerate before you hit the floor. Of course, a good example, if you driving a car and you hit a wall, you're not gonna have a disacceleration. So here is a straight to a linear. So a car comes out of a traffic light or whatever. Uh, we'll accelerate and if it's hit a wall or something, you don't have time to break. It's the same with a ball. When the ball falls down, the ball will fall and hit the floor. So we'll never disaccelerate here with big speeds when it hits here the force contract the ball down and start pulling the ball up so you'd have the ball start accelerating up until you lose the speed disaccelerate stop and move down so that's the the, the basic principle using all the all, all the keyframes so we're gonna play a little bit with that to get the animation. So hope everyone has the After Effects open with the project. We're gonna work basically the first one, the cube one, we're gonna leave as the keyframe, as a linear keyframe, just so we can compare. We have this four just so we can compare the difference, okay? The second one, uh, I'm gonna ask you guys just to put a hold keyframe so you guys can see the difference will happen. Uh, and that what we're gonna do, we're gonna put a hold keyframe on both then. So the hold keyframe will hold position until you see another keyframe. Okay, so if you select both of the keyframes here, if you right click your mouse, ooh, sorry, my pen is different. If you right click, you're gonna have the option of hold keyframe here. As soon as you click that, you're gonna see your keyframe is gonna change and what happen when we play. The cube is staying put, like just extend the preview, just move to the 50. If you press B and N, you just move the in and out of your preview or your render. So if you watch now what happen, the, key fr the, the cube stays in position until he finds the second coordinate where he should move. 
So that's pretty much the difference between the linear and a hold keyframe. So now we're gonna move to easy, easy, where you know things get a little bit more exciting, where you're gonna be able to kind of give your your own taste, your own experience, you know, uh, and polish things how you wanna, you know, exaggerating things, exaggerating things. Okay, uh, so before we be able to to change the acceleration and this acceleration. We we need to turn oops we need to turn these keyframes as a, a easy easy keyframe okay the easiest way you can press F9 on your keyboard uh, and uh, you're gonna see they change straight away just make sure you select both okay uh, if you if you wanna always make them back to linear you can select both and you can just hold Control and click on that and they move back to to linear keyframe. So also if you right click with the keyframes uh, selected, you have on keyframe assistant, you have easy, easy, or easy, easy in and out. So we're just gonna use easy, easy because we're gonna uh, polish the, the acceleration and this acceleration of your keyframes. Uh, so hope everyone did that. So when we play, I'm gonna turn this one on. I'm just gonna keep the tree on so we can focus what we're doing because the, the fourth one at the moment is just a linear as well. So if you look, all the three cubes has the same time, moves from left to right, taking the same distance and the same time, but they the animation is completely different, okay? So the first one is linear. One thing I like to do, and uh, I'm quite a visual person, so I like to see how things animate visually. Uh, what I mean with that, if you look at this first keyframe, you're gonna notice all these little dots. So if you notice, you got all these small dots this is small dots basically it is your frame so let me just make smaller so you guys can see so you can see basically we are in frame zero here my cube is in the first position okay so the second frame on frame one my cube is going to be here and then move here move here move here so if you look the distance between each frame uh, the distance is the same. That is make easy to see visually your animation is linear. Okay, when we go to a hold, you can see you don't have any dots here. Uh, the reason is because there's no animation between he holds his position until he moves to the next position. But that when we have the easy, easy, it start getting a little bit more intriguing. So if we look really at close here, we're gonna see the spacing is really small and it's starting to increase, 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 until hits a time where this is gonna start getting linear in the middle, where you get the highest speed. So what happened here, as you can see, it's moving one to one. Uh, what happened here, we have an acceleration. So you're moving from A to B and you're taking long on the beginning and you start speeding up your pace until you hit your full speed. And that, in the end, you start slowing down because you're gonna stop. That's a natural movement. Everything, kind of everything we do in life, uh, most of the human and the realistic movements always has acceleration and deacceleration. So I really like to see uh, these dots because uh, for me, uh, I'm quite a visual person. So I like see how is the distance of them. And I know by experience as well, I know if it's too much or not. So what we're gonna do before we start applying for principle of animation or the principle, because here we already have a, uh, acceleration and this acceleration. This is a basic thing if you wanna make your animation good. But at the moment, what is happening here, we're letting the computer do all the animation for us. So it's all 
computer animated. We, we didn't touch, we didn't move or, or, or just tweak the, the animation to start making the animation more on the way we want. So now we're gonna start talking about the graph editor, okay? So the graph editor is basically is this little guy here. So when you click, you have a different uh, graphic here. Uh, you're not seeing anything, of course, because you don't have anything selected. Uh, normally you need to select the attribute you want to see, but also you can see there is this little icon here. So basically if this icon is click, you're gonna always keep seeing when you see the graph editor. Uh, I'm not gonna leave on because I'm gonna be jump between attribute to attribute. I don't wanna leave on and off. And sometimes as well, when uh, you have a lot of layers, uh, if you leave on and uh, you got a lot uh, graphics here to change and you, you start picking the wrong one, that's annoying me a little bit. So I prefer just select what I want. Just see if they are really far away apart and I use that. Uh, so going back here, make sure you select the position. Uh, it's quite hard to see here what is going on, okay? So here we got a zoom option. And if you click on the third one, you're gonna fit everything to your graphic editor. So we have the two keyframes here and we got the graphic here, okay? So we're gonna be using the speed graph. Uh, the, re the reason I'm gonna use the speed graph is just easy to control acceleration and deceleration uh, when you're not changing position of the animation, okay? Uh, and we're gonna focus mainly on time here. Uh, so make sure if your is not like that, make sure your edit, uh, make sure your, gra uh, ooh, your graphic editor is on the speed graphic, okay? It's the second option here. Uh, one quick thing I do really like, uh, this is a personal on preference. Uh, uh, here is by default, I'm not gonna get into a lot of this, but if you look at this one, default is uh, spatial interpolation to linear. What that means when uh, you can change the interpolation of that, so uh, the animation. Uh, I'm not gonna get in depth on that because uh, we don't have time, but what happens sometimes if you start adding keyframe in the middle of your animation and move around, you're gonna start seeing the Bezier controls of your animation. Sometimes uh, you're gonna see between one, if you copy and paste the same position in the middle, uh, and you still see your object move, but they should be like frame 10 is this position and I cop on the frame 14. But in between these two, uh, it's the same position, but suddenly the cube is moving. Uh, this is the problem with the spatial interpolation. Uh, just because it's busy. Yeah. I like to keep my as a default, uh, as a linear because I prefer control and add interpolation when I want to know when the computer thinks right. Uh, but that is just a quick tip for you guys. Um, so going back here, so what is happening? We can see a curve happen. So this is the time and this is the distance, okay? So as you can see the time pass, the, the object distance is going up in pixel. So it's going up, 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 up and it's that the distance start keeping linear here and they start deaccelerating, okay? So you have these curves when you can control the handles uh, and you can stretch the speed. So what happens is if we look the curve now, we got time is moving, but position is almost not moving. You see the graph, the, the white line is almost not coming back. This is a thousand pixel. So from zero, to almost pretty much uh, 13 frames taking to move a thousand pixel. And then if you look, another 13 frame would be 26 or even less, uh, we're moving an almost like, almost 3000. So it's almost another 2000 something pixel. Okay, so you can understand it is a lot faster the acceleration. Okay, so if you if you just exaggerate that so you can see what happened when you animate uh, and press play, you're gonna see the third cube, they always still moving from A to B. 
in the same amount of time. So when you look the first one as linear, it's just a constantly moving uh, from A to B in a constantly speed. And the bottom one, the third one, is holding, let me just, is holding his position and it start accelerating, get full speed, and this accelerate. You can see there is more time for acceleration than the acceleration. So what happened visually here when we look, it's taking more time to accelerate and less time to deaccelerate. If I wanna make the last frame like, like a car hitting the wall, I can remove complete the curve. So you can see he accelerate and boom, hits like if we had a wall here. Uh, so basically, is hitting an imaginary wall here. Okay, uh, so that, hope that making sense so far. So let's just make this acceleration, the acceleration here, a little bit less exaggerate, but let's uh, leave the way we want. So what I want, I wanna have quite a lot the acceleration, but a lot of acceleration as well. Okay, so I'm gonna keep around 12 frames. Uh, and what happened is, you can see, my cube is kind of speed up, get full speed when I hit the middle, and this accelerate and slowing down until you almost stop. And you can see the animation start getting quite nice. Just playing with the curve, you can make the animation a lot more fun. And uh, also, you can give a lot more, you know, uh, characteristic for, for, the, for the cube as well, you know, than just like a linear cube as the top one. So this one we're gonna just keep as it is and uh, we're gonna start playing with the cube full and we're gonna start using few more principles of animation to there, okay? Uh, how is going so far? Everyone falling good? Just let me know if anything, if it's too fast, it's too slow, just let me know and, uh, and uh, or if you have any questions so far, okay? Uh, if it's, uh, in the end we do 10 minutes, question more about the industry and things like that, if you guys want. Uh, so what I wanna show you guys quickly is, so this is a, so if you, if you don't know what is 12 principle of animation, it's better you Google there. Uh, this is uh, the 12 principle Disney creates and, uh, and uh, is the principle uh, we use on the animation. Just to make the animation more realistic or more caricature or just to make the animation a lot better. Today, I'm not gonna cover all the 12 basic principle animation or would take us a lot of time, but I'm gonna cover my full favorite one and uh, I think it's, it's kind of the full more relevant for motion graphic as well. Uh, so first one, we're gonna talk a little bit about squash and stretch, okay? So squash and stretch basically gives the illusion of weight and volume to the object when it moves. So if you have a ball then bounce a lot, you know the material is more rubber. If you have a ball, then doesn't distort much, you know, when bounce, you know, doesn't stretch as much, you know, it's a more solid uh, material. Uh, you don't need change, can be just the same, you know, could be just these little cubes here. If they were a circle, they don't need to look like a realistic thing, but just to add this principle, you already add you know, uh, weight and volume to the object. Uh, also, uh, we use quite a lot to exaggerate action, you know. If you're gonna jump, you know, you can really stretch the guy. If you wanna shout, you know, you can stretch his face just to help, you know, just make the scene and the action a lot more exaggerate. Second one is anticipation. Anticipation is basically is to take your attention to the object before it uh, it do something. Uh, uh, so sorry, it's right wrong. It does something. Uh, so uh, anticipation. Uh, I'm gonna use a basic example. When you when you're gonna throw a ball, okay. Uh, 
you not just hold the ball and suddenly throw. You have like a baseball, uh, a baseball guy. He has the whole movement, moving his arm back, his posture changing, have a little pose there, and there he throws the ball. So that little anticipation movement makes everyone turn, look at him, you know, hello guys, I'm here, I'm gonna throw this ball, pay attention to me, and boom, the movement happened. So we use quite a lot of anticipation just to, to add. People is asking why I'm using Windows 7. I don't know why it's Windows. Uh, uh, we, you, well, you can get the, I shared the PD, uh, I shared the PDF with you guys, all these other files later as well. They, they can put in a link for you guys uh, about the Windows 7 that, I'm not really sure. I'm a Mac person, so he can answer that for me if there is a good answer. Uh, so anticipation is something adds quite a lot to the animation. Also, if you have a busy scene or things like that, helps you direct the viewer to where he should be watching, okay? On the third point is the slow in and out. So, this one is just being what we've been talking on this third cube, uh, on the third one. So basically is the acceleration and the acceleration, uh, the acceleration and the acceleration. So basically in a physical world, in a, in a real world, uh, objects and human needs to pick up momentum before they can reach full speed. That happens like the example I, I gave, uh, the example I gave to you guys about the car, if you're in the red traffic light, you know, green traffic light change and you accelerate the car, you know, the car needs to pick full speed until he's to the maximum full speed and that you break and the car is slow down, okay? So all this acceleration, if you're on a Ferrari, you know, your curve's gonna be really sharp, you know, on your graphic editor. Uh, so if you if you have Ferrari, you know your car is gonna accelerate from zero to to a hundred miles per hour in two, you know, like a, in six frame, let's say that. But if you in your old beetle, it's gonna take you forever to do the same acceleration. So you change the curve. So now it's take really long for the car accelerate. And if it was a Ferrari, it would be really fast acceleration. Okay, so it's like boom, accelerate really fast and you go slow down here. And the slow down, of course, is depend of the strength you, you pull your brake as well on the car, just to give a, a realistic idea. You know, if you just touch the brake and the press is slow, that means your car is gonna lose speed slower. Uh, if you just hit that, you're probably gonna hit your face on the window, but again, that's, you have a really sharp curve here and a really sharp deceleration, okay? Uh, the last one we're gonna talk is about exaggeration, okay? Uh, the level of exaggeration depends on whether one seeks realism, so do you wanna do something more real, more how people walk or how balls bounce and uh, when you throw things, or you wanna make more a caricature, more, you know, expressing your own a style on the animation, okay? So you can exaggerate a lot more, you can exaggerate a lot less. It all depends what you're trying to achieve, okay? And again, all, all this, this little full principle here, uh, it's all, all part of the idea you have behind, it's all part of, you know, what type of job, what you're trying to solve as a problem for your client, okay? It's no point you're doing something uh, more corporate, you know, for like, let's say if you, you work on pharmaceutical where things, you know, your animation should kind of is more explain how things work, how injection is applied and you, uh, let me exaggerate how this injection is going to happen on the guy, you know, this, you know, you're going to play a little bit more on the realistic side, you know, you're going to, of course, have a easy in and out. Uh, you may have anticipation there, 
but you're gonna keep the exaggeration as a minimum because the type of job you're doing don't require you exaggerate a lot, okay? So keep in mind your exaggeration depends on what you're trying to achieve, okay? What type of client you work, what type of animation you work, okay? What is the type of solution you're trying to solve for your clients? Uh, and each case, this principle is gonna work in a different way for each one. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna leave this on the side. Uh, we're gonna start playing with the fourth, uh, the fourth cube we're gonna play uh, with this full uh, principle. So let me just put this back how it was. So just to recap, we have the first one is the linear movement. Okay, it's quite boring, but there is reasons you want a, a linear movement. You have a second one as a hold keyframe. Okay, is uh, again, there is reasons as I gave like the guy popping up from one place to the other. Uh, third one, a just acceleration and the acceleration. Uh, and we add is easy as the computer is generate the animation and the acceleration, the acceleration for us, we went to the graph editor uh, on the speed graph and we change, we exaggerate the acceleration and the acceleration. So it gives a little bit more characteristic for our cube, okay? So for the fourth one, we're gonna start playing. So what I'm gonna ask you guys to do, just before, uh, before we animate, just select Oops. So make sure you select all the keyframes. If you don't have all, then just select. Uh, if they all close like that, just make sure you select the full cubes, press U, so you're gonna see all the keyframes in each layer. What I want you to do, just go to frame 15, select all the keyframes and move all that at the same time to the 15, okay? And uh, let's leave here about 70 frames so we can have a little bit more time to play here so we're going to start playing only with the the cube four i'm uh, gonna zoom in so we can have a look first thing here i want to start creating anticipation so before this cube move from left and right i want to hit this a little step back to his left and there he goes to the right so he's gonna be more on the focus of before all the other cube because he's gonna say hello i'm here i'm moving look at me i'm gonna do some movements so we're gonna uh let's just move 10 frames before uh or yeah just move 10 frame before what we're gonna do uh we're gonna just move the cube to the left oh sorry ignore that just copy and paste so select the the position of frame 15 Crop that and paste. So we want them both the same. So you can see there's no movement. On the second one, at 15 frame, we're gonna move to the left, okay? So what is gonna happen? He's gonna go to the left and goes to the right. So there is a little anticipation before the movement start. Uh, and that make we all look this, the fourth cube before we look all the other cubes, okay? When we get to the end, we're gonna imagine there is an imaginary wall here, okay? Uh, what I want you guys to do just to keep track, if you press Control R, you're gonna get the ruler on, and uh, just make sure you zoom to the, to the left and uh, just put uh, a guide, it just so we know this, uh, the end of the, the cube position is gonna be here, okay? When the cube hits this imaginary wall, we wanna make the cube moves back. So basically it's adding a bounce there, okay? So moves, let's move to 10 frames and we're gonna hold shift and move the cube back. Uh, give the space between uh, around the same amount of the cube. Then we're gonna move back and uh, we're gonna move to the same position so you can crop and paste so basic what is happening now we have a little anticipation the cube goes from left and right hit the wall do a little bounce and go back to his position okay 
of course, all really boring linear. So let's make sure we select all the keyframes, press F9. Uh, you're gonna see the animation is already getting a little bit better, but it's not really what we want, okay? So the time, if you notice the time here and the distance is quite long, so I'm gonna select only this one. I'm gonna make that go just halfway. And also, 10 frames for moving all oh, this is quite a lot. So I'm just gonna make this about seven frame and move this too. And I'm gonna move another, this is 10 frames. So I'm gonna move three frames back and just move this one. So the time is gonna get a little bit better. Boop. So, and now we're gonna start playing with the curves. Uh, before we change any of the curves and the speed of the, the position, I wanna add a little uh, scale to this cube so we can start squash and stretch the cube, okay? So if you hold shift and press, uh, select, make sure you select the layer, the cube four, hold shift, press S, so you can keep your uh, position attribute there and you can see the scale. So at this point, I wanted the cube be the size the cube it is. When the cube moves back, I wanted this cube scale. Make sure you unlock so you can just scale on the X, okay? So I'm gonna say, let's put 75 just to be precise. Uh, and I'm gonna move the keyframe, move a little bit more to the left. So what is happened, the cube is start moving there and that moves back and it's gonna hit the wall. So when the cube gets okay, smaller, when the cube hits here, the cube is gonna be pretty his, let, let's leave like that, I'm gonna explain that after. So when the cube hits the end, I wanted the cube to be the same size was before. So I'm gonna select the first uh, scale and paste there, so cop and paste. So basically the cube is stretch when it's animate, hits the wall. When it hits the wall, I wanted the cube squash a little bit and they're gonna stretch a little bit. So what I wanna here, I'm gonna make the cube move one, two, three frames. I'm gonna squash a little bit. I'm gonna move the position to be exact on the line. If you hold shift, he's gonna snap to that. So basically it's going there, hits the wall, squash. And that is gonna get full size when we get here. So copy and paste the one has the full size. If you're not sure which one is 100%, you can just change the number here, okay? On the 100% here. Uh, so get full size, or maybe we can extend a little bit. Let's put 110 and uh, get back to full size, 100. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna select all the scale keyframes and I'm gonna press F9, just so they all has easy, easy and the, the computer is generating. So it's the same curves for each one. So basically there is a bit, there is a little, cool, so there is, a little anticipation, I squash and stretch that, goes to the wall, hits, you can see that is, is working out, we're gonna fix on the curve, so it should stay on the left. You could set the anchor point in the beginning to the left or to the right and it would make easy. I just left on the middle, but we can change on the curve. So that squash, and they stretch as the force pushing the cube away from the imaginary wall. The cube moves back and stop. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna open the graph editor again. Everyone make sure you guys own the speed graph, select uh, position and scale. So you can see what is happening here. Uh, and just click the scale to fit everything here. So in the begin, uh, in the beginning we wanna 
keep the acceleration as it is, okay? Even if you want, it could just exaggerate a little bit. Make sure you select both because that you change, you can see the curve of the, the scale and the curve of the position is moving together. So it's gonna move anticipate a little bit. When it hits here, I'm gonna select this keyframe. I'm gonna push the acceleration out. So it means taking longer to accelerate. Uh, when get here, he's gonna hit the wall. So it's no the acceleration here. Okay, so it's basically hitting the wall. I'm gonna leave just a little bit. Uh, so if you play now, you can see what happens. So it's taking longer to accelerate. When it hits the wall, do a little bounce there, okay? Uh, so far so good, guys. We have another 10 minutes, so we're not gonna have time for Q&A. Uh, but let's finish this and after we, uh, we're gonna show files. So if you come on here, if you press plus and minus, you can see what happened. So here, as it scale up, okay, scale down, sorry. Uh, as it scale down, I wanna just push this a little bit. So I'm gonna make him scale. Almost holding position, okay. Uh, if you select only the position, now you can zoom here and fix the curve. Uh, let me just adjust that so it's on the zero. So if we look what happened, there is a little movement. So you can just shift in this. If you guys look your viewer, your composition, you can see the cube is moving to the right position. So if you look here, hits the wall, it stays there, it stays there, it stays there, and there is when the cube moves out. So again, let's select both scale and position. We wanna move these two. So when it's gonna move out, what happens is we have, so as we hit a wall, uh, we have a little squash there, and then we have a physical force uh, energy and push that away, okay? So that needs to pick up speed again. So that's what happened here. So we're gonna exaggerate that picking up speed until you get full here, uh, and uh, gets full, and they're gonna deaccelerate. I'm gonna exaggerate the, the this acceleration and going back. And uh, I'm gonna leave this one like this. Making sense? If you guys have any questions, just shout. Uh, so if we play now, you can see there is a little one and it's a little bounce there, okay? Uh, we can polish that to look a little bit better. Uh, so, just before we, we jump and polish on this curve as we got only eight minutes here, guys, uh, I just wanna tell another thing. So to polish that, we just need literally, when this bounce back, you see how it is? It's just between this to this. So what happened? You need to get the scale uh, with less curve. So as soon as this goes like that, he, the scale needs to pop out, okay? and it's gonna start getting a lot better already. Uh, so you can fix that after, because this should be the force pushing out of the wall, okay? But I'm not gonna uh, fix 100% on the scale of this for you, with you guys, because uh, if you know, I can't tell the, the rest I want. But it just is basically is that. So as soon as this come out, needs the scale here comes a lot faster. Uh, I just changed really quick and you can see it's already better, okay? But it's just a little polish on these curves. One thing I wanna tell, uh, so we, we look we look quickly uh, what we've done here. So we have a little anticipation, okay? We have acceleration, so easy out. We have a easy in, we have a stretch, and a squash here, 
and uh, and uh, we have a little exaggeration of the movement with the the speed. Okay, what I wanna we do? We could exaggerate even more when bounce here really goes and come back, and uh, that would give a different sense how is the material of the ball. Uh, but what I wanna talk quickly is about smear. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys know what is a smear in animation. So I'm just gonna go through quickly here, explain it in two minutes and show how we're gonna apply that. Uh, so is smear is S-M-E-A-R animation. So, so basically smear is a technique. So everything in real life, there is a motion blur, okay? There is a, a, a blur that represents the motion when things move too fast for our eyes. When uh, is smear is a technique create when we're doing a cell animation, because in cell animation, you're drawing frame by frame, so you can't create that illusion of motion, like the computer doesn't create that illusion of motion for you. So you start drawing a frames, okay? So if you look at this, this is a, a guy, a movement A and a movement B, okay? So he's going from top to bottom, but because the movement is so quick, uh, you wouldn't have the time for the eye realize, you know, uh, the same if you turn your head left to right. And uh, if you turn like in three frames, it's too fast for you catch that movement. So it would be kind of a blurry. So, uh, so what they did, they creating a, a concept that call is smear. So it's basically they draw like this. It's really kind of a weird draw. It's a really stretch, the illustration. And there, so you have one frame like this, you got in between like that, and there you have a frame of the guy like this. When you play, because it's so fast, what your eyes see is a kind of illusion of a motion blur. Uh, what a famous one is Johnny Bravo, okay? If you guys remember Johnny Bravo, all the movements are so, so fast. Uh, you can't even look, okay? But when you start seeing, they basically stretch. You see how his arm goes from down to up is basically three key frame, one down, one, uh, one up and one in between. So they use that principle of this mirror just to create the illusion of motion for you guys, okay? Uh, you can, if you watch that, you're gonna see, it's crazy. It's just my favorite, uh, my favorite uh, representation of his mirror. So well done, so simple, but so good. Okay, so what I wanna, we do quickly, we have four minutes. So when we playing, of course we could add, you know, we could come on this cube, turn motion blur on and turn here and you see what it is. My problem with that is uh, when you work with a vector animation, you know, sometimes the uh, motion blur doesn't really fit. Uh, fit the style. So I normally try and uh, create more digital motion blur, duplicate and mainly opacity and stretch the layer. But also I wanna, when the objects get his full speed, if you look at the little dots I talked before, uh, when I get here, it's getting the full speed. So what happened from here, let's say, it's gonna start quite accelerating. So I'm gonna put keyframe on the scale. When I get here, it's gonna get on the full size. So I'm gonna kind of stretch that up. And when I get, when I get here, it's gonna scale down again. When I play, just help the animation. Of course, the animation is quite slow for the amount of smear I'm adding. Uh, but you can see it's add quite a lot there already. If you had, the, if we compress, don't do that at home, guys, please. Uh, it's quite dangerous if you don't understand the. Uh, but uh, I'm not gonna show that. Oh, we don't have time, we've got three minutes. Okay, so I'm gonna just talk about uh, this real quick. So if you look, as we accelerate, you can even push back. As soon as we accelerate, let me turn, cool. As soon as we start accelerating, he starts stretching up. As soon as he hits the full speed, when he's here is the maximum speed, and he stays really distortion. We should even keep until here and that this, take this mirror off afterwards, okay? So look at how it gives the sense of his moving fast, okay? So 
uh, I think that's what I can show you guys for now. Uh, we're gonna share the file with you guys. If you guys have more questions about the course we're doing, you can join or uh, you can go online on uh, Escape website and uh, have a look on the information. But I just wanna share these little tips with you guys. You know, these four little cubes doing the same movement, you know, going from left to right, taking the same, time you know a part of the anticipation and the the bounce and the, scra uh, the stretch here but they doing the same animation but just watching them you can see adds quite a lot as soon as uh, you start putting some love to your animation you start playing with your curves on the graph editor you know and uh, and start looking better results i suggest just download videos you guys like you know try understand how they change the curve we used to study okay i hope you appreciate that i hope you enjoy uh, uh i think we're gonna need to turn off now thank you very much everyone come down and i uh, hope to see you guys soon bye